Hello everyone, something a little bit different today. This is my Hackintosh build. You're probably familiar with the board. It's the one I use in a few other videos. It's a board by Gigabyte. Mini ITX of course, knowing me. I set this up quite simply because I, well it's my Hackintosh, but I use it for some things that my Mac Mini can't quite handle. Plus it's nice to be able to just play around with it sometimes because it's a little interesting. But the main reason why I set this up again is not for any other reason than I wanted to play Fantasian in a higher frame rate for a stream. As you can see here, this is running on a Mac Mini. It does, it runs fine most of the time, but it does chug when you get to like the boat and the frame rate does drop quite a bit. Whereas using a faster machine, it does run much smoother. And there's 4K, which allows you to get some anti aliasing on the go because the game doesn't really support it. But high resolution downscale to 1080p, it looks quite nice. But that's not why I'm here to talk about really. This is just to show on how to set up a Hackintosh in the most basic terms. It can be a very complicated process and a lot of things can go wrong. I didn't want to make a very long video on this because it is a nightmare and little things can sometimes not work mainly Wi-Fi and stuff, Bluetooth and stuff like that. But the setup I've got here works fine with Bluetooth and with Wi-Fi once I add the network card in. And I will you show you what I used, how I set it up in the most basic terms and the config file I used is below. It works fine for a Skylake machine and a Haswell machine. It should work fine for most Intel based machines without too much issue. The important thing is the config is very bare bones, so if you have any issues, generally just Google it and edit your config file, maybe change out one of the drivers and you should be good to go. But this is a very bare bones, almost vanilla setup for Big Sur. If you have any issues though, do try and move stuff in your config file as well because bloated config files and too many drivers can cause an issue. But without further ado, let's go through the basic setup. Different tools can be used, of course. This is just what I use. So feel free to replace whatever you wish. But let's get started. So first off, pop into the BIOS. Disable a few things like CMS, Secure Boot. Pretty much everything I've listed here. And just turn off additional things like serial ports and stuff you're not going to need. This board here in particular, I've left all this stuff turned on. It generally doesn't matter. Other than Secure Boot, that has to be off. So this will just increase your chances of it working. It's not an absolute requirement. So if you're missing some of these settings, don't panic, it will probably still work. Okay, so let's go through the simple steps on how to set up a bootable installer using Windows. First, you'll need an OS or recovery image. Go to the link on the screen and download the macrecovery.py. Just click on it, then right click on raw and say save as and save it somewhere like in your downloads folder. Next, go back and open up recoveryurls.txt and make a note of what you need here. For this, I'm going to be using Big Sur, which is right down the bottom here, latest version. So I just want the top one. Don't need hyphen OS space latest. I will show you what you need in a second. But first, if you haven't already, download Python. The latest version 3.94 is absolutely fine, and whatever the current latest is. Next, you can leave everything as default. But on the next screen, you want to leave Python environment variables enabled. So you can type in Python into the command prompt. Next, open up a admin controlled command prompt and type in Python hyphen hyphen version. And you should see version 3.9.4, whatever version you've got installed, show up. You're now ready to download a base image. Now, taking that command we got before, just replace OS latest with just the plain word download and it should then proceed to download a base system image. It would take a few minutes depending on how fast your internet connection is. It's about 600 meg at the moment. Next you need to set up a partition. You need an EFI partition of about 200 meg at the start. Your memory stick needs to be GPT formatted. So make sure that's done there and that's all you really need to do. Next you need to restore the image to the memory stick. You need about 8 gig, 16 gig space 16 gigs recommended now you need a program such as transmac it's 15 days for free so it should work for this right click on the memory stick and restore disk image it shouldn't wipe the efi partition but if you have an issue just repeat the process until your efi partition remains restore the image and then you can 
access the AVI partition separately from let's say something like Explorer++ Plus Plus, because Windows Explorer for whatever reason even when it has admin permissions still can't access the drive so Explorer++ Plus Plus does the job has a nice advantage of having tabs open so it works just fine for what we need you then need to download Clover or Big Search up to you but Clover is in this example zip file is fine open it extract it somewhere and what you need is the EFI folder and then just copy it to your actual EFI partition inside the Clover folder you'll find a file called config sample.plist just rename it to config.plist and that is your basic setup for now now this is where it gets difficult the most important folder here is the kexts folder which is where the mac drivers are and what you want to use is the other folder this is where your drivers for your hardware need to go i've set up a couple of folders for when i was testing this you probably do the same to manage your changes because you don't always get it to work first time but here i have a couple of folders as you can see here i'm going to throw in my version 3 which is booted but it has no network access which is a problem but it just shows what the most basic setup is so in clover k extx is again in other i only have the selection here then these five i won't link to each of these individually you can search them there aren't many i'll list the more the next part when i talk about them but just drop these over and that is all you really need now on the subject of k ext's they're basically drivers for the Mac so I'm going to go over some of them very quickly this is not an exhaustive list of all of them these are just the ones you'll come across for the most basic setup if you've got more advanced issues you're going to have to look into them yourself first off you need fake SMC which basically fakes the Mac into thinking that it's a Mac you need uh, lilu.kex that is needed for some other files like whatever green which handles graphical stuff mainly amd graphics cards usb inject all is needed for well usb and apple alc is needed for audio next it should be able to boot using the config file i will post below i'll discuss config files in a minute but those are very complicated you should be able to boot just fine any issues that pop up Google the message that pops up, you might find there's a simple solution for it. Maybe you need a slightly different driver or something like that, but it doesn't really matter. But once you have booted, you'll end up in the recovery environment, as you can see here. But one issue, we don't have a network, so we cannot proceed any further. As you can see, it will complain about that. So let's just shut it down and let's have a look at network drivers. If you're using Intel, these are the following that will work with the Intel driver. If you have something that's not one on this list, give it a try anyway, it might work. If you have Realtek or something different, there are other drivers available and they should work as well. In terms of Ethernet, compatibility seems to be there across the board. So just select the correct driver, drop it into your EFI folder and away you go. I've used Intel in this case because that's what I need for my board. Before we continue, we need to have the config file set up. There are many config file editors out there, it's just basically an XML file you need to strip a lot of it out to make it boot first time i've dropped a link below to a github repository that contains a working config file for this board and it should work with other boards as well i've used it on a few of us so grab that drop it in and see if it boots any issues google it and have a look around there is far too much here to cover in a very short video it needs a whole video by itself just for the config file which i may cover in the future after a few reboots when installing, you eventually get in here, set up your iCloud account, log in, do all the setup, that kind of fun stuff. You then can install any software you want. I've installed a few things here already. Next, you need to install something like Clover Configurator. Link down below again. And mount your EFI partition, which is on the left-hand side. I've already mounted it here. You can then open it up, and you need to copy over everything from your EFI partition from your USB stick into here. Mine's coming on the desktop here, you drag it over, and the structure should be the same. Your machine should then be able to boot properly without having the memory stick installed. You can then now give this a test, and install graphics cards if you wish, and everything should work just fine. Okay, now you should have rebooted with your chosen graphics card installed. I'm using, in this case, the RX 480 here, so that's worked just fine. 
and you should now have access to everything you need. Now, as you can see, Wi-Fi up here is not working. That's because there's no Wi-Fi card installed. And nor does Bluetooth. To solve this, the easiest way to do it is to use a Bluetooth adapter to get Bluetooth. If you're not too bothered about stuff like AirDrop. A ASUS USB BT400, for example, works perfectly well. If you want Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and you want it properly supported, you will need something like an official airport card. For example, I've used here the BCM94360 CS2 using a mini PCI Express adapter, which it works great. I will now reboot and pop that in and I'll show you that it works. Okay, I've dropped in the card. You can now see we have working Wi-Fi. Granted, the signal is very low because where I'm currently sitting, I don't get Wi-Fi on this side of the building. But that works just fine. Okay, over here, we have working Bluetooth. You can see there's a Pro Switch controller currently not connected. But we have Bluetooth working just fine. So using an official airport card, you can get working Wi-Fi using this board. So now you get everything set up, you should have a fully working Mac. Stuff like the iPhone simulator works absolutely fine. So if you need stuff like Xcode and that kind of thing, it should work fine. By extension, everything in the App Store, I have not had any issues at all regarding any of this stuff. And in terms of gaming, as we'll go through right now, I will play a few games to show you that in terms of gaming performance, it also works pretty well. So that's where I'll leave it for today. In conclusion, it can be done. This is a very quick guide granted, but I'll leave you with some game footage to sign this video out. Any questions leave them below, I will try and answer them where possible. I'm no expert on this, but I'll try and put you in the right direction. And if it gets a lot of feedback, I will try and do a video on the config file, which is going to be a long video in itself. I didn't want to bog this down with too much information. So thank you for watching, and I'll leave you some game footage right now. So thank you for watching. See you in the next one, and goodbye. to her. She was trying to hack the elevator's security. Circuits are fried. Easy fix. Just need to find a new data set. Maybe she was just scavenging like us. Do you really want to take that chance? Okay.
reach the helm before we transform. Who am I? Your only chance of survival. And you mine, though it pains me to say it. We carry mind flayer parasites. Unless we escape, unless we are cleansed, our bodies and minds will be tainted and twisted. Within days we will be geich, mind flayers. It is where we might gain control of the Ga'arth, the ship. Once in command, we will deal with our gay captors. We can do nothing until we escape. That must be our priority. First, we exterminate the imps. Then we find the helm and take control of the ship. We will address the matter of a cure for this infection once we reach the material plane. 